The video you're about to watch is for mature audiences only. It has graphic content. Viewer discretion is advised. It is not a Walt Disney production. In fact, it's a real farm. And it's only for people that are have an appreciation for the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'd gotten a phone call earlier in the day that Gracie, a three-year-old Longhorn, was going into labor. Her water had broke around 9 a.m. that morning and I had asked my niece, Brienne, to go over and keep an eye on her and uh, to send me pictures and videos of things that, you know, that I thought I could share on the page. I was hoping that by the time I got back to the house, Brienne would be able to, you know, have video of a beautiful calf, you know, bull or heifer, didn't matter to us. But instead, the texts I kept receiving were, those of concern. Brienne, who's worked as a vet tech for years and of course been around the farm all of her life, noticed that mom was having difficulties and that she had witnessed, and this is baffling to me, but she had witnessed several water breaks and it had been probably six hours after the initial message when I finally got to the property. I remember getting out of the truck and realizing how hot it was. It was still 107 degrees Fahrenheit. Gracie had been in labor for the majority of the day. And then Brienne had let me know that with each contraction, the baby was coming out all the way to its head and then back in. We saw the tongue had already swollen to twice the size that it should be. And so I got on the phone and found out real fast that we had to pull that baby. Uh, not just for the baby's safety, but also for the mom's. And so with that, we, we got to work. It was a team effort. We had people in the know on the phone. We had me and Brienne and Uriel, you know, all there to help. And I will say that it was a successful delivery. Problem is, the entire ordeal, I think, just terrified mom. To complicate matters, right after the calf was delivered, we had a McCoy's materials delivery show up and the large truck did not help at all. Uh, and mama ran off to the woods and left baby there with us. Not knowing what to do exactly, I just began to do what I thought mom would do in this situation. Clean baby off, make sure the lungs are cleared and all the fluids cleared where it could breathe freely. And I thought at some point mom would walk back up. But <laughs> an entire hour passed and no sign of mom. I could see her and she had no interest in coming back towards the barn. I think that she wanted to stay with the rest of the herd. And so at some point, me and my older, my eldest son decided to drive the calf, you know, down to mom. Uh, it was a neat reunion. Mom was happy to see baby. Of course, everyone else come over to look as well. And the three heifers began to work on the calf. At some point, she took her first steps, which was just adorable to watch. But we could see right off that the calf had already gone a couple of hours without anything to drink. And then we began to have a, another fear. The fact that a calf can't go four hours and so we knew we were, you know, on a countdown against the clock. And so we begin to, Uriel and I, begin to take turns standing the calf up, 
trying to align her with the teat. And even though she came close several times, it seemed as though maybe from the issue with her tongue and the swelling in her tongue, she could not get a latch. She could not latch on. And so at the four hour mark, we went ahead and pulled the calf and we brought her to the Longhorn property, Longhorn Lusters, where Jamie met me at the door with the colostrum serum and uh, she took the entire amount which was great and then the next morning we offer her a bottle we've discovered that she cannot drink from the normal sized calf bottle but she is able to drink from the goat nipple now that means we're feeding four had <laughs> four bottles at each feeding, which takes forever. But at this point, she's doing great. She's alive and well. Mom is doing great. And even though it was a, it was a noisy night at the uh, I'm a Survivor property, Mom looking for baby, I feel like we did the right thing that we had to do. And I'm happy to say that, you know, Mom and baby are doing well. We ask you guys to keep her in your thoughts and prayers because there is a two-week window where things could go south really fast. And just think about her. Or think about her mom. And eventually, once she's weaned from the bottle, she will return to live out her days with mama. So she already had her full colostrum bottle yesterday. And so today we start her on milk replacer. And baby, don't hurt your back. I can carry her for I you. I can lift her. I can't lift Ruby anymore. No, Ruby's too big. Where are you going with her? So we're trying to find some level ground. Hey, hold on for a second, son. We're feeding, okay? Baby's a little bit jittery. The dogs are probably not helping at all. They want to do their part. Oh, Lord, there's the worst one. All right, so now I'm going to have to go ahead and tell you guys the name of this baby. Um, because of the fact that it was my niece, Brienne Danielle, who did so much and who played an instrumental part in helping save her, I chose to name her Danielle, and we're going to call her Danny when I'm when she's been a good girl, and I will scream out Danielle when she's being naughty. Don't let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. Something like that.